were 10 men who had the disease. This was back in the day when they didn't know what caused the disease. They didn't know how the disease was passed from person to person. So they had set up really elaborate protections for the general population. Everybody who had it had to wear raggedy clothes. They had to wear a, a mask around their, their face that covered their nose and their mouth. They could not live in the cities. They had to live out in the, in the countryside. They couldn't live with their families. For all practical purposes, they were prisoners, but without the bars. Jesus came along where these 10 men with the disease were. He was on a trip. He was going down to Jerusalem. He was living up in the north in Galilee, right? But he's going down to Jerusalem. On one side of the border, you have the good Hebrew people living in Galilee. On the other side of the border, you have the half-breeds, the Samaritans. A lot of anger between these two sides of the border. Jesus is walking along the border. He, he starts to head into a village with his entourage. When, you know how sometimes you hear somebody calling and you don't really pay attention. You just hear this, somebody calling in the background, but then suddenly you realize they're calling you. So these folks are there calling and they're like, Jesus, Master, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Have pity on us. And he stops. He, he's heard them. He turns and he sees them. This motley crew of ten diseased men that everyone is petrified of. I don't know if they came near him, if he said, or if he went over there. But in a moment, they're right next to each other. Jesus said to them very simple instructions. There's no fanfare. He just says, gentlemen, go and show yourselves to the priests. But they knew what that meant. They knew that showing themselves to the priests was the way to be able to go home. Only the priests could certify that they were disease free. So they obediently do that and they begin walking or running away from Jesus toward the priest. But they look at their skin and it's still crazy skin. It's still contagious skin. They've still got the disease. But while they're walking, one of them looks down and says, Whoa! And they all stop. And they all look at their own skin and they all go, Whoa! We're better. We're okay. The skin was perfectly normal. The contagion was gone. The disease was healed. Now all of a sudden there's this future comes flooding over them. This possibility that they could have a life again. Maybe go back to their families. The death sentence has been lifted. And so they all take off toward the priest. Now they're really running. Except one. One of them remembers he's forgotten something. He turns around. He sees Jesus still standing back there watching them. And he realizes that's what he's forgotten. He runs back to where Jesus is. He gallops back to where Jesus is. He gets to Jesus and he just throws himself down at Jesus' feet. He's hollering in a big voice. Now he's not hollering, have pity on me. Now he's shouting out praises to God. Now, I should have told you something. I should have told you that the disease had made strange partners out of men who were very different from each other. And all of these 10 men were not from the same country. Most of them were loyal Hebrew patriots. But one of them was an outsider, one of the half-breeds. He was one of the foreigners. So now Jesus looks at this one man. He's like, seriously? Ten men healed of the disease? 
and it only occurs to one of them to come back and thank God. And wouldn't you know it, he said, the one that came back, the only one that came back was a foreigner. He says to this Samaritan, this foreigner, stand up, man. Go on home to your people. Your faith has not only healed your skin, but your faith has sozoed you. You've been sozoed more than skin deep. You've been made well all the way through from top to toe. You've been made well. And that's one small part of God's big story.